Hello everyone, my name is Ollie and I'm a second year medical student at the University of Warwick on the graduate entry programme. I recently completed my 10 week surgery block, so in year two at Warwick, this surgery block consists of five weeks of general surgery and five weeks of trauma and orthopaedics. This means you've seen a real range of things, abdomen, urology, breast, endocrine, and of course, muscles and bones. Now in my case for this surgery block, I was based at a smaller district general, that's George Elliott Hospital um, in Nuneaton, kind of just outside Coventry, but I could have equally likely been placed at one of the larger tertiary centres, University Hospital, Coventry and Warwickshire. Now that I've been through that block and I'm kind of back to studying internal medicine again, I'm on my cardiorespiratory block now, I just want to look back at my surgical block, I kind of made notes of the things I found useful and the tips I'd give to people either in my own year who haven't had their surgery block yet or first years um, who are currently at Warwick, they're about to sit their exams and they're coming up into year two, advice for them and anyone else at any med school who still has not had their rotation in surgery yet. Hopefully you will find some of this useful. So here are my tips to get the most out of your surgical block. Obviously there is the caveat, as many of you know, I want a surgical career, I love surgery, I love being in theatre, I find it really, really exciting. You know, not everyone is interested, some people just want to get through, and if that's true, just tough it out, it won't last that long. But I think some of the tips here might still be useful even if you're not actively interested in a surgical career, so please try and bear with me. First thing I want to talk about is just getting stuck in. Because of the nature of what surgery actually is, because of how invasive a procedure it often can be, you get the chance to see things that you would never normally be able to see. You can kind of cut someone open and put your hands inside them and it's not even illegal. You'll often be asked questions by the surgeon during operations about what they're doing, what anatomical structure is this. Be sure to engage with the things they say. Even if you don't know the answer to something, either say you don't know or just make your best guess because the faster and the better you can get that dialogue flowing, the more they'll be able to teach you while the operation is actually going and you can see it in front of you. And for me at least, seeing the anatomy in that setting when they're kind of going through it for you as they're going into the body layer by layer, that to me really helps you embed a deep memory of what the anatomy actually looks like in a person. In optimal cases, the surgeon might actually ask you to scrub in with them, um, either to allow you to enter the sterile field and see the operation from up close, or potentially even actually assist with the surgery itself in some small way. So a key tip here, to make this process easier, go to the theatre reception either you know the day before the night before even the morning of the day of the operation if it's an afternoon slot ask for that surgeon's theatre list and you can see which operations are coming up this gives you a chance to actually prepare by going over the anatomy you can look up what's actually going to happen in the procedure in many cases you can actually watch videos that exist on youtube of these procedures so not only does that refresh your knowledge of the anatomy and allow you to answer some of those questions that you will definitely be asked by the surgeon, it also allows you to prepare some smart questions which shows that you're engaging and thinking about what's going on, which obviously makes it more likely that that surgeon is going to want to teach you. Teach Me Anatomy and Teach Me Surgery are two fantastic websites that I regularly use for this, as are just the kind of relevant surgical textbooks for that system. Second thing to mention is learning how to scrub in properly. So what is scrubbing in? Scrubbing in refers to the process of simply gowning and gloving in an optimally sterile way that is suitable for surgery. And it would normally look something like this. Please forgive my gown. I tied this by myself, which is really difficult. Scrubbing in is basically very careful hygiene, making sure that you don't touch anything that isn't completely sterile, which obviously means that when you go up to the patient during the operation that you're not transmitting anything from your skin into the surgical wound site or onto the patient. It does take a bit of practice to learn to scrub in properly. It took me kind of four or five times before I was really comfortable, but you can always ask an older student to show you how, or when you go into theatre, you can ask the staff there to help you. Someone will always be there to help you learn how to scrub. I taught some of my friends the other day at the hospital how to scrub in one of the clinical skills training rooms and the reason I think this is so important is that the less someone has to babysit you the more they're probably going to let you do. So if you rock up to your surgical placement and the surgeon says, you know, do you want to scrub? Do you know how to scrub? If you can just say yes, then you're straight in and they don't have to think twice about it, which is why I think learning to scrub is a really good idea. 
And there are a few really good guides on how to do this um, out there on the internet. I'm eventually gonna do one on this channel, but for now, I think Geeky Medics is probably the best place to start, as with most things. The third thing is remembering to talk to everyone in the room, not just the surgeons. There'll always be other people like theater nurses, scrub nurses, uh, anesthetists will be there, operating department practitioners, ODPs who are very heavily involved, maybe reps from pharmaceutical companies might be there, and even students from other courses like nurses or physician associates. I've always found it really useful talking to these people when the surgeon's busy doing something because they can give you a kind of narrative description of what the surgeon is actually doing. They'll all have seen the operation so many times that they can actually talk someone through it and that's really useful. You can always ask about what particular pieces of surgical equipment are, what do the machines in the room do, and that I think is a good tip. Ask the anaesthetist to talk you through what all their monitors and machines do because the ones I've asked about that have always been really happy to take me through them. Tip number four is kind of counterintuitive. You're on your surgical block, you wanna see as much surgery as possible. I think the thing I actually found during my surgical block was that time spent in theatre watching surgery is actually pretty low yield. Operations can routinely take, you know, three, four hours sometimes, maybe even longer once all the preparation and the anaesthetics and then the operation itself and the cleanup, once all that's been taken into account, they can really rack up the time. Obviously a fantastic opportunity to be able to witness these things, but you are on a time limit, particularly if you're on a graduate entry course, an accelerated course like the one here at Warwick. And I actually think that the number of discrete facts that you learn towards your exams in that three or four hours might be relatively low. So the way that me and my clinical partner decided to combat this was that we made a list of all the operations that might be relevant to each of the presentations that we were told to learn. We'd try and see one of everything, but no more than that. So in general surgery, we might try and see an appendicectomy, a cholecystectomy, maybe a bowel resection. We didn't get the chance to see one of those, but you get the idea. Keep it relevant, try and be efficient with how you're spending your time. And you've always got to keep in your mind that it's the exams where you're ultimately going to be tested. So make sure you're constantly preparing for those. And the last thing to say is that the best learning experiences I actually had during my surgical block was spent on the wards looking after the patients with the foundation doctors and the SHOs, the senior house officers. They will tend to have a knowledge level that's obviously naturally much closer to what you have as a clinical medical student. And not only that, but they will have a much better idea than I think a consultant does of what exactly you need to know as a medical student, particularly if you can find one that went to the same medical school as you. I found that they were very good even when they hadn't been to the same school, at pitching questions that were very much my level. They'd also test me on things like the basic anatomy, the pharmacology, the management, the kind of more holistic picture that we need to know for our exams. What I'd recommend doing is going to the ward round, finding out who these doctors are, trying to follow them around, and then saying, you know, can we book another slot in advance so you know we're coming and we can maybe spend an afternoon with you on the ward. That obviously then gives them time to prepare, they know that you're coming. It's a bit less like babysitting and a bit more like formal teaching. And you can always ask them who the best consultants are to go into theatre with as well, because they're very well placed to introduce you and say, you know, surgeon so-and-so, I've got these two medical students, they've been hanging around with me, they want to come into theatre with you, because they know and trust their SHO most of the time they're gonna take that opinion on board and probably look after you more closely. And all of these things just mean that you have a bit of a more productive time in hospital and on the wards instead of hanging around looking useless and waiting for someone to take pity on you. So before we finish, my last bonus tip is whenever you go into theatre, make sure to record what you've done on the free Royal College of Surgeons e-logbook. I've got another video and article coming on this in the future, but basically what it allows you to do is track all the operations you've seen and you can enter in what you saw, who the responsible consultant was, in what capacity you were there, were you observing, were you scrubbed in, were you assisting? And it just means you've got a record of what you've done that you can show to your consultant at the end of a block, as well as take it forward if you're interested in a surgical career later on. So thanks very much for watching guys, please be sure to hit that like button for me, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel and don't forget to go and check out postgradmedic.com for more free videos just like this one. Take care and I will see you next time. Bye bye.